Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are doing well. I'm back in Minnesota with Kyle and with Charlie. This is a long overdue video. We are at the end of the season and we haven't talked to you guys about the fuel system yet. So this video will be an update about the fuel system itself. So we'll get into it. guys welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to be talking about the next parts of upgrade to the TSX we've been running endurance racing for a little bit over a year and a half and the TSX has been proven to do two hours up until this point if you follow us uh, on the last videos uh, Brian talks a little bit about some of the fuel strategies and the constraints we had, so we are going to be addressing that in this video. What we have here is going to be a radium surge tank. We're going to be installing into the trunk space of the TSX. We have selected all vibrant AN fittings. We're going to be going with 6AN all around with some PTFE stainless steel and nylon hoses. We've used radium parts in the past and love them. So we're going to be using some radium, uh, adding some fuel filters, and we're going to kind of walk you guys through different sections as we install it into the TSX. everything so for example line E is filter to surge tank um, you'll see how that goes in the car in a minute oh, and then we wrote down so line E filter to surge tank 90 degree fitting 90 degree fitting length of hose is 16 and a half inches that way if we need to recreate anything it's very easy we just look at our sheet remake the line and it's we don't have to measure anything it's just easy 
And then we did pressure test all of these to 150 PSI, so we know they're not leaking. So we're gonna go install these in the car, and then I'll show you how it looks. So I'm gonna try to explain this fuel system setup we got going here. I guess our constraints, we're running champ car, so it's endurance racing, so everything's, you know, we need as much fuel as we can get, but we have to do it within the rule set. We have a factory fuel tank, so unmodified TSX fuel tank. So we got our feed line here, so lift pump coming under the car. It's gonna go through this one-way valve. I'll explain that in a little bit. And then we got these huge cat filters so our real set allows us to use fuel filters with no penalty so we have these quarter gallon fuel filters and then we have a radium one liter surge tank and then we have our radium fuel pressure regulator so as far as the plumbing goes we got feed from the lift pump in the tank goes through our one-way valve into our fuel filters and then from our fuel filters we go into the surge tank and then out of the surge tank, we go into our fuel pressure regulator. And you'll notice all these are labeled with like flow direction. So surge fuel pressure regulator means the flow path is this way, surge to fuel pressure regulator. And then we have fuel pressure regulator to bulkhead, which ultimately leads up to the engine. And then the return from the fuel pressure regulator to the surge tank. And then we also have the surge tank back to the factory tank. So we've drilled a small hole in the factory tank, which is allowed um, to then basically be the overflow for the surge tank. Okay, and then that one-way valve, the thought behind this, and this is you know what we're trying, is if, say, worst case scenario, we run out of fuel in that main tank, the OEM tank, we still have a decent amount of fuel in these filters but we don't want this to drain back. Like say that main pump stops working. We don't want it to drain back into the tank because it's not useful for us there. So we want this to drain into our surge tank. And that's like worst case scenario. We need to limp it back to the pits. We're basically out of fuel, but at least we get to utilize that half gallon that's in the filters. So that's the idea there. Who knows if it's going to work that way, but that's what we're going to try. Okay, so this is what it looks like underneath the car. You got those uh, bulkhead fittings that you saw from inside. And then you'll see here, we're utilizing the factory, the factory line going to the engine. The idea behind that is, say worst case scenario, we're at, a, we're at an event, we're at a race weekend, something goes wrong with our surge tank setup, we can just take this off and go right back to the, the OEM tank to utilize the factory fuel system. So it's kind of a, a backup plan. So yeah, that's everything underneath the car. We still need to like key clamp everything in place or zip tie make sure nothing's rubbing. Okay, the last steps of the fuel system is we need to get it wired. So we're gonna have Andy do that at ASM. So he's gonna wire in all the pumps. We have a Walboro 255 in the tank and then a Walboro 255. Actually, we'll have two of them in the surge tank. One of them will just be a backup. And then we'll have a fuel level switch on the surge tank itself. So that'll be like our last warning switch where we're really out of fuel, but then we'll also have the factory fuel level sender in the tank. constraints we had when building this fuel system is for so for rules everything that's carrying fuel needs to be covered by metal so that might be a firewall or just a metal casing so you'll see on like the fuel fill it's within the cabin so it's near the driver so we had to cover that with metal so it came up kind of a clever way it's a metal tube with silicone couplers but then we also have like end plates over those and then metal casings around those silicone couplers just to you know all of it's encased in metal, so we meet rules there. And then we also had to build a firewall. So our situation was a little more challenging because we cut away so much of the back of the car. So we built a firewall right off the trunk, going straight down. That was just like the easiest solution at the time. It was the quickest and we had to get to a race. So that's what worked for us. And then we filled all the gaps with a fireproof sealant. And that, that seemed to work pretty well. One thing that did do is it it made us put the fuel system so far back. Ideally, we'd want the fuel system a little more forward. 
um, just so if we get hit in the back, it's not going to compromise our fuel. Uh, so that's one thing we would maybe want to change, but for now it's functioning just fine and it's uh, enclosed by metal to the driver. Okay, and then for fuel filling and fuel venting, we modified that whole system as well. So the fuel fill is a two inch fill going all the way down to the tank. So we modified the tank a little bit. We used a OEM bulkhead and then modify it to get a two inch fill. And then for the venting, Radium offers a dash 12 rollover vent valve. So we're using that dash 12 and that comes back up to our OEM fuel point, our fill point. Um, so dash 12 works great. Uh, we used to fuel five gallon jug, I think in a minute and a half, and now we're down to about 20 seconds with the Hunsaker and that's not really at full throttle. So we still can get that down even more. We just need to get our venting a little bigger. So we're probably gonna go to a one inch vent line to increase the vent capacity. Okay, so for the fuel fill and venting, we're using this new performance uh, two inch fuel fill, which works pretty good. And then for our venting, we're using the OEM fill location. So there's no cap on there. And then our vent line feeds right to that. So we do have to open that up before we go fill. Not ideal. We are looking to upgrade the fuel fill probably to the radium dry rate and then maybe a different vent situation over here so we don't have to access the OEM location and then we can get faster fueling even faster than 20 seconds would help us. So Kyle talked about how we improved our fuel refilling quite a bit throughout the season as the car was able to uh, run faster laps we consumed a lot more fuel and um, there's been a lot of races where we've been guessing fuel and running out at times. So we knew that the second uh, iteration had to be um, a surge tank along with some sort of uh, fuel light, fuel warning indicator. So we talked to um, Aaron at Radium. They have tons of surge tanks. We found the one that met our uh, criteria for Champ Car. So it's uh, half a liter along with some big diesel fuel filters for at capacity. Big thanks to um, Ed. I reached out to him about our shopping list of parts, which we'll uh, put in the description below and shared with him about our project, uh, the evolution of the TSX, uh, and just kind of gave him a shopping list and to see if he wanted to help us out in any way. We got a huge discount from your regular uh, dash six, dash 12, uh, dash 10 lines to um, some special OE fuel line quick disconnects that they offer, which uh, makes plumbing to the OEM uh, fuel tanks super easy. Um, so big thanks to uh, Ed and the whole Vibrant team. We dropped the car off running on OEM fuel system to uh, Andy at uh, ASM. He basically just wired up uh, the wall roll pumps to uh, the AIM PDM setup. So that's fully powered. In addition to that, he added some warning indicator lights. So yeah, it's a it's a happy marriage of you know uh, data acquisition, PDM, AIM stuff, hardware from uh, Vibrant, and then uh, fuel components from uh, Radio. So um, this is the current iteration, and it's been working really well. We've seen other teams do similar stuff like this, so hopefully this inspires everybody to kind of look at what may work for them and uh, have a better idea of, of what an endurance race car fuel setup looks like. That is pretty much going to do for this video. We have the TSX loaded up on the trailer. Charlie is taking it down to Rochester for the car's new wrap. So the next time you guys see this thing, it'll be completely different. That's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay up to date, with this car, the new livery that's coming, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's gonna be pretty darn awesome, I think. Until next time, stay safe, stay smooth. I'll see you guys in the next video.